Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sabine. This is our How to Make a T-Shirt Quilt series and today we're gonna to be adding our final stashing and cornerstones to the right side and the bottoms of our quilt and showing you how to assemble your quilt top. Now, if you have been sewing for a long time and quilting, this might be something that you already know, but feel free to watch to see if we've got any tips and tricks for you. But if you're a newbie, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna cover exactly what it means when you look at a pattern instruction and it gets the layout and it looks like the quilt is kind of coming together in there, but you're not exactly sure what it means. So we're gonna go through that diagram and what that actually means in addition to how to actually sew the bits on. So in our last video, we decided our layout. That's important, you have to do this first because you need to know which blocks are going to be in the right-hand side and which blocks are gonna be in the bottom so we know which ones need additional stashing. All right, so we're gonna start with sewing the sashing to the right side of our block. This is really similar than when we sewed to the top with just a few differences. So what we're gonna do here is our fabric should be pressed so that the seam is going underneath the sashing. So that means that our seams are gonna butt up real nicely here. That's not the case throughout the entire quilt top assembly because when you press your seams under, it is almost impossible to ensure that every single seam nests throughout the entire quilt assembly process, but it does in this case, so it makes it a little easier. All right, so we are just gonna flip this right sides together, and then I like to turn it so that the seam I'm pinning is parallel, or parallel? Yes, parallel to my body. That makes it a little easier for me. So I'm nesting my seams just like we did before when we were sewing that top edge on, and then I'm gonna pin in that right side of that seam allowance. I'm going to pin again at the corner, and then I'm going to pin in the center. And that gives me enough stability so that I can stitch all the way along here and get it sewn on so we're good to go. Now, what I typically do when I'm doing this is I have everything laid out on my bed, I'm ready to go, and I will sew this on as I'm assembling the row. So I'll get this ready to go and also the piece next to it. So in this case, I've actually already assembled most of the row, but I would have one next to it. So that way I can just sew everything together all at once. So I'm gonna actually do that here as well. So I can sew this seam first, then this seam, and we're good to go, and it's all one section. And just, I don't know, I just find it a lot easier when you're dealing with one row at a time than trying to remember what went in what order on the right side. So that way I can tackle one thing and if I can't quite remember where something was at, I can just go look at that row in particular. And there's only four things that can be out of place as opposed to many things that could be out of place if I'm trying to sew many rows together all at once. So when I flip this right sides together, you can see that both of these seams are pointing off to the left. That is just an unfortunate thing that happens when you are pressing seams under instead of open. This is why in most quilting applications, I prefer to have my seams pressed open because we don't deal with this. Now, it would be really challenging what you could do if this really bothered you, is you could lay everything out, figure out which blocks are going up, which blocks are going down, and then you could press, you know, like your odds going up and your evens going down, and then alternate that for your next row, it's super challenging and a pain in the butt to keep track of. What I do for this is I accept that I'm going to have a little bit of a bulky seam and that's okay because it's a t-shirt quilt and t-shirt quilts are bulky anyway. So it is what it is. It's more about the memories than the precise sewing in this type of project. So what I do is I just try to line that on top of each other as best I can. And then I'm gonna put my pin in like almost right exactly where that seam is. That way I can keep it as nice and tight as possible. And then I'm gonna continue pinning at my corner and my center like normal. So now I can just sew this with my quarter inch seam like I've been doing all along. When I get here, I kind of make sure that my seams didn't get flipped back. That happens sometimes. I wanna both go in the same direction. And I'm gonna sew as close as I can to that pin before removing it because since we don't have seams pressed open or nested, it's harder to get that to be exactly perfect and not all mine were. So don't beat yourself up if yours aren't either. It's just the limitations of sewing with seams pressed to one side. 
All right, that block is now attached to the rest of the row. And now I can go ahead and sew this as well. And that's, that's just how I do it. Like I like to just pin it on. It's not gonna be in the way of anything. And I can just kind of be an afterthought to add it onto the side once you've sewed everything together. When you see my hand back here, I'm not tugging on the fabric. I'm just kind of helping Guy to keep it straight. These t-shirts and the interfacing are very heavy. So sometimes it can kind of want to turn on you. It's no good. So if I just kind of hold it back here, I'm not pulling or tugging. I'm just kind of guiding to help make sure everything stays nice and straight as I'm sewing. So you need an applique pressing sheet anytime you're doing anything with a t-shirt quilt that involves an iron and screen printing because we don't want that screen printing ink to come off on your iron. That would be bad. So since this t-shirt, all the screen printing is coming really close to that edge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up. I want to press so that my seams are going underneath this part of the block and I kind of finger press that over. It kind of likes to hold its shape. So this is the one time where we can't take our iron and drag it over because we have to put the applique pressing sheet in between the iron and the screen printing ink. But the interfacing and the t-shirt combo together will take that press pretty well if you just sort of manipulate it with your hands and get everything in place. So that way you should be okay. And it's not super precise piecing at this point. It's a very forgiving project. So if it's not the end of the world if it isn't as flat as it possibly could have been. All right, that's looking pretty good. I also need to press this seam here. And it's the same situation where I have some very heavy screen printing ink really close to that seam. So I'm just going to press that under and manipulate that seam. It is not wanting to behave with me, especially right here. Uh, so I'm going to do maybe a little bit of that by hand just to get it started where there isn't as much screen printing ink. And then finish out the rest with that pressing sheet to protect my iron and the shirt. This process is a little bit different for the bottom. Instead of putting it on the side, we're just gonna go ahead and pin it to the bottom and sew there. Now, I probably should have mentioned this before, but I'm not doing anything with that bottom corner yet, the bottom right corner. We're gonna do that separate because we need to add both a side piece and a bottom piece to that one. Just a little bit different process because we also need a cornerstone over here. So we've gotta get that from somewhere. So we'll cover that next. But for now, all you need to know is it's the same process. Now this is something where I will just pin all of these to all the bottom row blocks just to get that out of the way and sew them all at once because remember I like to do one row at a time so this fits. I can do one row at a time and this is part of my row assembly process. Okay, we're gonna flip that around so that it's working parallel to me. I find it a lot easier to pin that way. But I get it in place first. I think that's the key. If you get it in place first, then it is a lot easier to just manipulate it and get it wherever you need it to be so that it works better for you and you get better results. But I always place it before I spin it around any which way. All right, we've got that applique pressing sheet down again. So I can go ahead and press that over. This time I am able to set it on the side that we're pressing and press it away get a nice crisp seam there. All right, so this is a block that's going in my bottom right corner. So we've got a cornerstone for the side and the bottom, but we're missing something. We need something for this bottom corner. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, you should have one extra of these at least. You might end up with more than one depending on what size quilt you're making. And I'm going to take that seam apart so I can take this cornerstone and sew it to the bottom over here. So that way I can sew to the side and then sew for the bottom and we are good to go. I'm gonna give this piece a little press just to get out of that, because it, since it was already pressed, I wanna make sure it's nice and flat for when we sew it together and then we can press later once it's sewn up. It's a lot of pressings in one little bit. Just get it flat. All right, so at this point we can sort of tag team this. What you can do is you can put this together. You can put a pin in it if you want. It's not super necessary because it is a very small seam, but if you feel so inclined, go ahead and do that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and pin this section together, and then I can just chain stitch both through the sewing machine to save a little bit of time. All 
right, you guys should be a pro at this by now. Just stitch into the side. Now we're gonna sew that cornerstone to that bottom stashing unit so we have equal length on that bottom block. All right, using that pressing sheet again, I'm gonna go ahead and press this over. Everything the way it should be. Now, because we can make this seam go in the opposite direction very easily, we're going to. So this one, I press my seam going under the sashing, which is to the outside of the block. This one I'm gonna press, it's still going under the sashing, but it's gonna be going in the opposite direction because this time the sashing is under the block. All right, now we're ready to pin this to the bottom of the block and sew together. Now for this one, I'm going to pin at both seams where they join. And then also in the center. All right, I'm gonna give this one final press, again, using that applique pressing sheet to protect that screen printing ink and your iron. All right, now we've got our bottom right corner block ready to go. All our sashing is attached, so it's time to assemble this quilt top. So we're gonna go ahead and throw up the graphic of the assembly diagram. And this is the way pretty much almost all assembly diagrams look, especially if they're for just a standard you know, horizontal row assembly quilt. Sometimes things are on the diagonal, things look a little different, but for a standard horizontal row assembly, this is what you're gonna do. So you'll see that first row, you see four separate blocks. That signifies that when you lay it out, they start as four separate blocks. Then usually in the second row, you'll see that you are going to be joining them together to make sets of two, which is what we're gonna do right now. So I've got one block here and one block here. They're gonna to join together to make a set, we call them twosies. So we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna do that right now. Now at this point, if you are doing a quilt like this one where you press seams under instead of open, and remember we press them open because it's or to the side and under, uh, because it's really difficult to get the t-shirt quilting material to go open. So this is just the better option for this type of quilt. But we're gonna have a lot of seams. These are pointing in the same direction. These are pointing in the same direction. It's gonna be bulky. It's gonna be a little bit harder to get that precise seam. It's gonna be totally fine. So if it's not perfect, don't stress out about it. People are gonna like the memory more than your perfect points. So just get them lined up as best you can and if they slip a little bit in the sewing process, they slip a little bit in the sewing process, it's okay. Now I usually would pin together both sets of twosies at the same time and bring them over to the sewing machine at the same time so that way I can get both sets ready and be ready to join the row after that, especially in a quilt like this. And the one I'm making, there are only four blocks in a row. So I'm halfway done with a row by the time I've got these together and it goes pretty quick. Now I generally don't press until I have my entire row assembled. You certainly can if you want to, but I like to wait until I have everything together, take it all over to the ironing board at once, and then work on it. So if we look back at our diagram, first row, all sets of four individual blocks because it starts out as four individual blocks. Second row, those become sets of two because we have sewn two together. Now in the next row, you're going to see that those sets of two are joined to create one complete row. Now, obviously not every quilt block or quilt layout is going to be just four. There may be more steps to this process if you have more uh, blocks in your row. But in the example for this one where I'm making the lap size, which has four blocks in a row, at this point, we're gonna join our sets of two to become one complete row of four blocks to a row. So again, I'm gonna put these guys right sides together. Uh, my seams may or may not be going in opposite directions. I'm not gonna fuss about that. I'm just going to make it work and sew the best I can.
Now is the point where I will press any of the seams where we were joining blocks together. This is one of them. You can see it's not crisp yet. Now, this is where I do pay attention to what direction I'm pressing things. So I like to press all of my even rows going one direction and all of my odd rows going the other direction. It really doesn't matter which direction you start with as long as the second row is going the opposite way and the third row is then going again the opposite way so in this case i have pressed when i feel my row over here i've got the row above this is all going to the left so these seams all need to go to the right and go underneath in this case the sashing so i'm going to go through and do that and then we're ready to do our final assembly step and that's assembling our rows to create our quilt top and again make sure that you are using that pressing sheet whenever you are going over screen printing ink all right, so when you look at your assembly diagram for this quilt, your bottom two rows are gonna be separate rows. But if it were a larger quilt, you might see that those two are together. It means that you are then going to assemble your rows together and then your halves together. And basically you're just turning twosies into foursies and two, one set of two rows into two rows sewn together and then quilt halves and then a final quilt. So basically at this point, all you have to know is it's time to sew your rows together. And since we pressed everything in opposite directions, that's gonna be a little bit easier at this step in order to be able to get everything lined up. So I've got my third row already sewn together. So I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together and go get at it. Now, one thing you might wanna do as a quality checkpoint is make sure you should not have any sashing on the bottom. Sashing should always be meeting t-shirt. Um, if it's different if you have two rows of sashing you either mess up and sew the sashing to the wrong side of the block or you might have your entire row upside down so just make sure that one of those things has happened fix it and you're good to go so when i'm assembling the entire row my pinning is not that different than when i am pinning individual blocks i'm still going to pin at those seam joins and then i'm still going to pin in the center and i'm just going to repeat that all the way down the length of the row. All right, we're just gonna stitch down that entire row. Now, I like to press these seams so that they are underneath the sashing because it's just a lot easier to have the quilting fabric fold under than it is the t-shirt fabric. But make sure you're still using your applique pressing sheet as you work your way down the quilt. All right, so now I've got the bottom half all sewn together. And for me, that's just two rows. And we're just gonna repeat that process of joining our sets of two to create larger units until your quilt top is together. Since I only have four rows in this quilt, I've got a bottom half and a top half, so I'm ready to get this thing finished up. Well, that's it. We have got our t-shirt quilt top together. You know everything you need to to get that top done. And if this is where you wanna stop and pass it off to a long arm quilter, that's totally fine. But if you're hoping to gift it in time for this graduation and you're following along with us, probably nobody's gonna be able to fit you in. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to prepare your quilt to market and how to quilt it with a walking foot on your home sewing machine. So you, this is absolutely, especially if you've done a lap size, totally doable to do on your home sewing machine. I have done up to a queen size quilt on my home sewing machine using the methods I'm going to teach you. It is a little hard on the back when you have a big quilt like that, but one this size I can do in a couple hours just sitting at my home sewing machine. I actually did one this Christmas. I just sat down, I wasn't sure how long it was gonna take, and I was done in no time. It goes pretty quick and you absolutely can get it done and bound and gifted. Now, if you have not done this before, we have a beginner quilting video tutorial series that you can watch for free. You're gonna want to make sure that you take a look at the videos on preparing your backing fabric. That's the fabric that goes on the back of your quilt and making your quilt sandwich. That is where we layer together our quilt top, our batting, which is the fuzzy warm stuff on the inside, 
and then our backing fabric and secure that together with some safety pins. So make sure you check that out before you go any further. You also can check out the walking foot quilting um, episode in that one, but we are specifically gonna show you a really easy way to just create a grid on here that's gonna work really, really well for your quilt and it will allow your t-shirts to be the star of the show, which is what we want here, right? We wanna show off our shirts remember those memories and have a nice thoughtful gift to give someone. Well, thank you so much for following along with our How to Make a T-shirt quilt series to this point. You should be very proud of yourself. You have a finished quilt top that's very exciting, especially if this is your first quilty project because it is very beginner friendly. And make sure you like, subscribe, and all the things so that way we can finish this up together in the next video. If this is the first video you're seeing of this, we've got patterns and all the supplies you need to do this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All the video tutorials on how to do it are free to watch, but a great way to say thanks for that is to get your supplies from us. You can get the interface and you can get the fabric, the rulers you need, the applique pressing sheet. And if you buy the applique pressing sheet and the interfacing from us, then you're gonna be able to get that pattern for free. So that's always a great deal. And we wanna say thanks to you guys as well. All right, well, until next time, happy quilting.